What's up guys, welcome back, Jando here, 2023. We got some new projects, so let's get right into it. Okay, so we have a million one things to show today because I've been running in the background with so many things, but we got really into the flipper yesterday. We made a stand for our desk that sits here and holds our flipper, has a charging slot and all the stuff you'd ever want uh, because I was programming and flashing and trying to make my own app for the flipper last night. We got into the flipper discord. Uh, hello everyone if you were there from yesterday, but I wanted to show off this design real quick. Uh, it is designed with 3D printing in mind and it has a nice hole for the lanyard, all the other stuff. I don't know what I'm gonna use this for in the future, but maybe some kind of mounting or something if I want to put the flipper on something else. But cool design, uh, files down below if you'd like to print gen one of these. I have so much experience making these things. Let me, let me, okay, we're diving into the one of the part bins that'll have 50,000 of these mounts. But I've made a million of these GoPro mounts. I have everything, everything's kind of a mess. This is where the new parts are staying right now. Um, <laughs> we're, we're getting there. But I have 50 billion of these designs, so it was super easy for me to pop in and just make a mount like that. But if you think this is cool, yeah, download print. It's designed where it just goes, I'll, I'll pull the clip when I pulled it off the printer. Okay, that looks pretty good. Not gonna lie, looking pretty good. Ooh, first try, first try. <laughs> Cool thing, first thing to start. Next up, we have the ESP32C3 sensor box that I have made and designed. This is my new design. It's not print in place yet, but the idea is to have a small form factor sensor box that can hold all the electronics right inside. And I got, I got this down pretty good. Let me show you how this thing works. This thing's actually pretty cool too. This is using that, that new chip that I've been playing with a bunch, those seeds. It's amazing. I went through yesterday uh, and I just was ripping through bags of seeds, building little projects out of these things. We have another full project in here somewhere, uh, not in this bag, but there's another project, yeah, right here. This is another seed project. And th these things are so amazing for rapid prototyping. I don't care about ruining the seed anymore since the chip is like $5. So I can just take whatever I'm working on and just like throw it at it. But this is another one we got done. Maybe I'll show this one off too. Uh, just soldered this to the edge. But this is a, a temperature sensor that can be inlaid. Let me show you quick this thing first because this is a whole web socket thing built into it. Let me, one second, I need to pull. So you see now, if I turn this thing on, there's a little switch I can flick on the bottom here. If I turn this thing on and then I come back up here and I type in a command, we get a web socket that is streaming from the device itself. So this is, and let me make the scale bigger. Okay, so this is actually live data coming off of this box itself. You'll see if I put my finger in front of this little sensor, it's a little position sensor. And this is actually an APDS 6690. Uh, it does like gesture detection and stuff like this. You can wave your hand over it, but I'm using it for proximity. So now I have a kind of box switch that I can just put anywhere and I can see if this is moved or something goes in front of the switch. Long, long story. Okay, next up, next up. Okay, next up. And this is where things get really, really, really interesting. So this is a part of that same library I was playing with before. Don't, don't worry about all the code, but this is called Point E, and it is a library that OpenAI is releasing that is making everything go absolutely insane when it comes to the 3D modeling, and this is kind of my end goal with all this, but I asked it uh, what a spherical Jando looks like, and it looks like it got a sphere at least, but I'll, exchange, I'll explain this in short, because the reason why this is absolute insanity to me is the fact that these text-based AI models now completely understand 3D space, and this should be a little spooky, but at the same time, I want to make something amazing out of this, even to a point where I was super excited, even, even and I got I got Maker's Views to reply to one of my uh, one of my comments the other day. This dude I've been probably following since the beginning of 3D printing that I've gotten into. But I want to make this AI uh, give it the ability to let people just talk to it and then 3D model for them. So then there's no more 3D modeling in a step where you have to go before you can start 3D printing. At least that's the idea. But let me let me show you another one quick because this one doesn't really show. I'm gonna ask it uh, to make a plane. One sec. Okay, so now I'm asking it uh, to make a Boeing 737. You got to be nice to your AIs as well. They're they're working hard for you. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to compile. I have everything running through GPU, so big boy computer is doing its work finally. Finally, that little that little card's getting some work done. But you'll see if we come back over here, it give or take takes around 20 seconds for this to generate, which I don't think is terrible in the in the scheme of things. And this brings it all back into this, all this other point cloud stuff that I've done. Maybe I'll, I'll link this up here. I've done so much stuff with point cloud that point cloud is the future in the way I see it. And it's gonna solve a lot of problems we have for small scale 3D printing. But it finished this, so now let's go run through the rest of this sketch and once we come down to here we can display and this is what it thinks a Boeing 737 is I mean that's that's not bad that's not bad I've seen a lot worse <laughs> but it's crazy what these AIs are capable of now the, now the trick is and this is gonna be the hard part is giving it training data so it understands what's 3d printable because I had to use my brain very heavily to figure out a design that could be 3d printed there's no overhang well there are a couple little overhangs but no unsupported overhangs and everything in the print just like works and getting it from there to 
there is going to be a massive, massive, massive undertaking, but it's something that I want really bad and I think would be really useful for everyone to have, especially with how easy printing is becoming with like the bamboos and all the other stuff. But, but yeah, look, look at that, look at that, that's insane. <laughs> Okay, and that's about it for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I guess we can start off, start off the new year right. We're gonna go for some resolutions this year. This is my year and we are taking it. This is finally the year where we take some of the 50 million projects we have and either open source everything or try to sell it ourselves. I don't know, maybe you wanna buy one of these. The files are gonna be online. Maybe you wanna buy one of these for me, I don't know. But uh, we're, going, we're going in this year and I wanna set some goals, some expectations for me, some, some statistics we're gonna try to get this year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bold one. We're gonna try to get to 100,000 subscribers this year, and I'm being straight-faced when I'm saying this. We are gonna sell our souls to the algorithm a little bit. Have some ideas, don't worry, don't worry. But uh, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're not already subscribed, do it. You're gonna be on my wall again. I have to settle that stuff back up. Uh, the counter will be set up again. Uh, we're finally fully moved in, and we're feeling good. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.